Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to do an update on some of the products that I've purchased since the beginning of this year till now. I've been buying so much. Boy, I'm going to be doing update videos forever. I'm going to start first with one of the products that has become kind of like a workhorse for me. And it's perfect for a work day or a kind of slightly lower key makeup day when I want to look pulled together but I don't want to look like I'm trying too hard. And it's this. This is the Identity Palette from Persona Cosmetics. All right, so she's not new. Not even a little bit new. This has been out for years and I had just never tried it. But Persona was having a sale at the tail end of December. It was like the last week of December and I was like, well, that looks interesting. And since then, and I know it's March now, I've been reaching for this so much. My favorite thing about this is that you'll see, you know, there's some warmth, there's some cool tones, you have some shimmers, you have mattes. I'm wearing it on my eyes today. Now, the metallics in here are really pretty, but they are not like the blingiest. I feel like there are other brands that give you just a little bit more pigment, especially once you start kind of blending them in. So that's what swatches look like. They're super pretty, but the minute you kind of start blending them in, as you can see, these swatches are not great, but like there is more uh, of a shine here, but as it gets kind of farther out, it's not quite as shiny. I feel like this bronze one here has more of like a glow to it and less of a shine. And same with this. I'm wearing this one today. There are other eyeshadows in my collection that are more like a really distinct blingy shine on the eye. And the reason that I like these is that they are softer. Um, and they're not quite so like all you see is eye makeup. It, it gives a subtle shine without being too much. And I feel like this is the sort of formula that I like where if I want more intensity, you know, I can just go in here and be like, okay, that's what I want. But if I want something that's less intense, more kind of like easy, like, yeah, you're wearing makeup, but you're not trying too hard. I can blend it out from this to this and it's still really pretty, but not crazy reflective. And I, I feel like there's a time and place. Like sometimes, you know, there is like, I, I want art the sparkle. I want all the glitter chunks. Like I want everything. And then there are times that I want something that's just a little bit more low key. Now the mattes in here are fantastic. So this is not like the way I'm describing it. It sounds like the uh, metallics in here aren't good. No, they're exactly what I want for an easy no fuss day. I've been kind of like in a one shadow look or maybe, you know, all matte look. I don't know about you, but I always feel like January, February, and the first part of March, I want really easy eye looks. I do this and I've noticed this every year I go back and I think about it. Yeah, I was wearing one shadow looks or I wasn't wearing any eyeshadow, maybe just mascara. There have been like probably five or six years worth of me doing that where I want a really simple eye look and this gives it to me. Um, and I'm not saying that you can't get a really like intense, gorgeous eye look out of this. You can, but I like that this is not overwhelming me. It has, you know, 12 shades in here, but I start thinking about it. Am I wearing warm tones or am I wearing cool tones? And I break it down from there. The mattes blend beautifully. I get really gorgeous all day wear. If you haven't tried this, I know it's not new. I know it's not like the coolest new thing out there, but if you want just a solid, amazing eyeshadow palette, Identity, the original one, is amazing. Let's talk about some of the complexion products I picked up recently. I got this Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder from Danessa Myricks. Okay, so you can see I've been using that. I got the universal shade. I have been intrigued by this. This is a product that is kind of touted to do all sorts of things. There are tinted versions of this. This one is, you know, basically clear, but it has a special ingredient in there that is supposed to keep your skin from getting too oily or to keep your oils at bay as they come through throughout the day. I, I don't know if I'm not using this correctly, but I cannot use this to set my face. Um, I find that when I do that, because this is a balm, I mean, it, it has like that kind of emollient texture to it, even though it has that kind of more mattifying product called Upsolite in it. I find that if I do this and start patting it in with fingers, and I'm not like doing this, but just like patting it in with fingers all over my face, over the top of liquid and cream products like liquid foundation, cream, bronzer, blush, highlight, 
but I feel like it doesn't do the same thing a traditional powder would do. Powder kind of sets my face. And I find that since I'm almost 50, that I have product, if I don't set it with powder, that settles into my dynamic facial lines here, corners of my nose. Like right here, sometimes even in the corners of my mouth, um, I, the more fine lines I have, the more I find that I need powder so that the liquids that I put on top, like my foundation and concealer, don't just kind of settle into those creases. I tried setting my full face with this once, and by the end of the day, I felt like I had a lot of foundation right here especially. Um, you'll see I have these larger lines in my forehead, and if I don't set with powder there, anything I put on top, foundation, concealer, um, like a cream bronzer, can quickly fall into those lines, and then I have a line of pigmentation settling in there, so it's like a dark, creasy line. It only accentuates the fact that I have those lines more, even when my, my forehead is not, you know, moving in that really dramatic way. So I have been using this as a primer. Now, you know I, I'm not a primer type of person. I have never been a, like, devoted face primer or eye primer. I'm trying to change that for 2023. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try and do my best. And this is good at, because it has that Upsolite in there, which is a, a ingredient that's going to help keep oils at bay. I love this over the nose before I put on my liquid foundation. I like this um, even up underneath my um, eyes here to make sure that I don't have product settling. And now I can't put too much. I put just a little tiny bit of it here. I kind of go a little bit heavier over the nose. I'm trying to help fill in the pores and kind of blur these lines in through here. But I use this as a base. I, I have been watching some of Danessa's tutorials, like her short form ones that she puts up on Instagram on the reels or just on her regular Instagram account. And I see how beautiful this is. And, and maybe it's designed for a different skin type. I have combo skin in the wintertime. I tend to be a little bit drier. We're just getting out of the point where my skin is like, ah, it's so dry and moving into, okay, we'll be okay. And by like the end of April and early May, I'll be like, well, here we come like in my T-zone. So I think this is gonna be great in the summertime, but I found that this is probably not for people who have dry skin. And I feel like for me, I can't set my face with it because even though it is blurring, it, it doesn't set enough that I don't get product settling into my dynamic facial lines. And then it's just unattractively calling attention. So interesting, but I'm still trying to figure it out. If you've used this successfully, or if you have one of the colors, like the foundation colors, how are you using it? How is it working for you? Now this one from Rare, this is their skin tint. Okay, I'm wearing this today. I have the lightest shade in N10. So it's very light. I feel like I, it's probably too light. I, I kind of feel like it's too light. Um, but I like the glow that it gives the skin. It's very, very lightweight. This is kind of like, almost like, are you wearing anything? It's definitely not foundation. It's a tinted moisturizer. Um, I feel like it gives a really pretty glow to the skin, but it's just, just a little bit too fair. It's okay. Do I think you have to have it? No. Am I going to get rid of it? No. Um, but it's not the first thing I'm reaching for. I didn't fall in love with it so much that I feel like, oh my goodness, run out right now and grab it. So these have kind of been like, oh, I can make them work, but eh, I'm not passionate one way or the other about them. That's the best way to describe them. Now, one thing that I am really passionate about and I have really been enjoying is this. This is the Beauty Pie Super Translucent Loose Setting Powder. This is their translucent see-through shade. I uh, love that we have a tamper here. I'm never a fan of the net packaging, but it, it works. I, I would much rather be able to tip something out into a lid, but then if you don't have the tamper, then it's just kind of like product everywhere. Like you open the cap up, like whoo. So I feel like the packaging keeps it from going places I don't want it to. I have been using like one of these little velvety puffs and a smaller guy, where is my little tiny guy? This one for under the eyes, oh my goodness, this powder under the eyes, it's the best thing that's happened to me since the Glossier Wilder. I mean, and that that's a lot, so that's saying a lot. I feel like I can just quickly pat this in and it doesn't take a lot. It sets 
my skin beautifully under the eye. It doesn't add any age to my eye. Some, there are some powders that it's like, it's an unforgivable sin. What did I do to myself? Why did I think this was a good idea? And I want a powder that I can use all over the face. This is a great all over face powder. This one is a little bit more on the mattifying side. So if that's kind of what you're going for, if you want something that's great and really lightweight under the eye, but slightly radiant, I would recommend the one from Beauty Pie, their One Powder Wonder in Uberlucent Universal. It looks like it's white in a pan, but it is the most glory, and it's not radiant like highlight. It looks like skin. So it has just, just, just a little bit to look like an actual, you know, so you don't look like a porcelain china doll matte, but you don't look like a glowy grease bomb. It's just enough to make it look like beautiful skin, but it's also traceless under the eye. I really have been liking the powders from Beauty Pie. I'm super impressed with this one. This has been like really, really, really great, and I'm, I can't stop reaching for it. I have quite a few cheek products. I feel like the things that I have been purchasing the most, I kind of quit buying eyeshadows, and I went straight for lips and cheeks. <laughs> I'm not wearing it today, but I have been reaching for it a lot. And this is the Skin Mimetic Micro Suede Bronzer from Make Beauty. And look, it's, it looks like it's not a color I would normally pick. I normally go for the lightest. This is the second lightest. This is the shade Lunar. The reason that I didn't go for the lightest shade of this is because I have another bronzer in my collection that I recently decluttered. It's from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the lightest shade of the Airbrush Flawless Bronzer, which is a beautiful formula, but Every time I put it on, I look sick. I look like I have jaundice. I look like I have malaria, like somebody needs to hospitalize me and help me feel better. It doesn't make me look beautiful. It makes me look ill. And I was worried that the lightest shade of this would do that. Now, what's great about this, even though you would think that's too dark of a shade for you, I love this because she's buildable. So you can get, you know, some really nice warmth. But when I'm putting it on, you know, if I'm blending it in with a natural hair brush, which can sometimes pick up too much, but is really great for blending and buffing, it gives the right amount of warmth. This is not something I would recommend for like bronzing. If you like to like kind of contour a little bit with your bronzer, this is kind of warm. This is more just like straight up bronzer, but she's beautiful. Wears all day. Also is not powdery looking on the skin. That is my favorite thing about the powders from Make. They don't look heavy on the skin. I remember talking about the blush in my last video like this. The bronzer is the same. Their powder is really nice. I feel like this is one of those products that if you like a skin-like but not radiant bronzer, you might really like this. My favorite thing though, look, refillable packaging. So you get this and you can buy just the pan if you finish this. Same thing with their powder, with their blush and with their powder bronzer, love that. And I feel like the packaging is stunning. So this has been another thing I've been reaching for a lot. Here is one that I'm wearing today. This is the bronzing stick from Rare Beauty. I have the shade Power Boost. I think this is the lightest, but it is very much a warm, creamy bronzer. This kind of surprised me at how easy and blendable it is. It's like, wait, what? Look, and it, and it you can just keep going with this. And it ends up, it, is, it does end up looking rather warm. So I can't like just really go to town with this. I have to be a little bit careful. Otherwise it can pull a little bit too warm on my skin. I wonder if there's like the next darker shade, if it has a little bit more depth to it, if that would be better. But I love, love, love this formula. And it's really creamy in this form, like when you first swipe it on. But then after you blend it out, it's not creamy. So your hair is not going to stick to it. You're not going to have problems with this kind of making other products that go on top feel emollient, I feel like it kind of dries down nicely. Um, I never have had to layer a second layer of bronzer. I just, you know, one swipe and blend it out and it does really well for me. So I don't know if you were to put something else over the top of it, like a second layer of this, would it pick itself up? I kind of think it would behave well because I bronze and then I blush and then I highlight and then sometimes I add a little bit more blush and all of my cream products go beautifully over the top of this. This is really nice, a very affordable um, brand at Sephora. And guess what? They just came out with three new shades. And I was like, ah, oh, fantastic. Something that I didn't like the first time I tried it, and I think I just didn't like the colors that I had picked to go together, was this. This is the Cheeky Blush from Victoria Beckham Beauty. 
All right, so I have the shade Playground. I'm wearing a little bit of this today along with another blush, but I love this formula. This formula is so pretty. Now, I think for me, it was like, I was wearing this shade with a bright red lipstick, and then I was wearing kind of golds and slightly browny um, burgundies on the eyes. It just, it was too much. But look how beautiful it blends out. This is one of those that also dries down, but it doesn't end up, like I feel like the one from Rare has a little bit more of a powder-like feel to it on the skin. This one here, even though I have blended it out, it feels like skin. Where this one feels kind of like there's something between me and my skin. This one, it's like, wait, what? And, and I feel like it is so easy, easy, easy to blend. And it's, I don't know. I've been really impressed. Out of all the things I've got from Victoria Beckham, and I, I didn't purchase that many, like five or six, because this is expensive. This is probably the one I have appreciated. It's so easy, it's not too much. Love, 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 and the formula is fantastic. Now, there are other really great formulas at a lower price point, so if you are not somebody who is into luxury beauty, um, don't buy it. <laughs> but I feel like for a luxury beauty product, it's not just packaging and the name. I feel like the product itself is really good and I have been liking that. All right. Two other Janessa Myricks products I picked up recently and I'm wearing both of these. I'm wearing a combo of this and Elisa Eldridge lipstick on my lips and I'm wearing it kind of like right here towards the front for blush. This is the new Yummy Skin Flush Blush and this is the shade Golden Hour. Now every time I have the lights on and the camera going, I feel like it looks a little bit oranger than it really is, but it's very, very pigmented. It is that same technology that you get in the Blurring Balm Powder. And this is one of those, this shade, look how pretty it is. Now, that's like one small dab and just going in. I have to be so careful with this because this turns into clown cheeks on my fair skin in like no time at all. I have to, I have to be so careful, so careful, because like that could be clown cheeks on me right there. But this is great because this is matte. So it ends up making my cheeks have just the color that I want. It's a little bit sheer. You can see skin through it. So it's not blanking out what's underneath, but it wears really beautifully. And because it is so vibrant, it brings such brightness. This is exactly what I'm wanting for spring and summer. I can see myself reaching for this a lot. And this will give you, especially this bright shade here in Golden Hour, kind of like that sunburnt look. If you like that, I think you would really like this. And I feel like the texture is nice. This is new as well. This is their Vision Flush Liquid Highlight. It comes out with a little doe foot. I mean, really pretty. This is the lightest shade in Tiara. This I feel like, although Danessa says this can work on any skin tone, it's really, do you see how subtle it is? This, I feel, is one of those, like if you tap on a little bit more, let me put on a little bit more for you here. I feel like you can get to a little bit more glow from this, but this is more like pretty radiant skin and not necessarily blingy highlight. If you're going for blingy highlight, this is not gonna do it for you. When it is finally rubbed in, do you see how it brings light in such a pretty way, but it's not glittery? That's my favorite thing about this. Now, I feel like I don't get all day glow with this. I feel like there are times like partway through the day because it is a little bit more moisturizing. It is a little bit more emollient that I'm like, where did it go? And maybe it's just absorbing into my skin. It feels really nice and dewy on the skin. Not the same way that other products, um, if you've ever tried the RMS Living Luminizer, I know that is coconut oil based. And that feels dewy because coconut oil is it's an oil <laughs> and um, the shine comes partly from the oil and partly from the pigment suspended in there. This feels more like, like glowy skincare. Like it has that feeling that when you put it on um, and you start to rub it in, it doesn't really feel greasy at all. It feels like really, like really luxurious skincare. And look at that. You can get a gorgeous glow from this. This is the sort of highlight that I have been liking. I like a really blingy highlight, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I feel like the older I get, since I have a lot of crow's feet here, those blingy highlights really catch and accentuate that, and this just makes my skin look pretty. This has been one of those that I've been really intrigued to wear and I have been reaching for. I would say more excited by this than I am by this. I picked up the Perfect Strokes Liquid Liner from Rare, did a full face of Rare Beauty. I will link that for you in the description box down below. 
but this is a kind of a chunky liquid liner pen. It's what I'm using today. I feel like I have a better point on this and over here got a little, a little too much, but this is, this is nice. It gives a really nice line. And of course, the more you press, the thicker the line. But I, I feel like this is actually a, a nice liner. This one's good, but because I'm used to a slightly finer point to it, this is great because it is a brush tip. Um, I feel like liquid flows really nicely through there. I haven't had it for that long. I started using it in January, and I feel like um, sometimes, and you can see it a little bit here, you know, more pigment here, more pigment here, a little bit less here. I feel like it might be running out of juice and I never store it like with its end down. I just store it flat and maybe I need to start storing it like this. But there will be times that I'm like painting on and like get the first eye done and I go to the second one I'm like, wait, where is the juice? It's a good pen. Um, I'm not like, get rid of it. Um, it lasts pretty well. Um, I also take it and like will shove it in between my eyelashes not like tight line with it, but just like right in between the lashes if I have like a a little bit of gap between like my lashes, this kind of blanks out that skin in there. I feel like that does a pretty good job and it lasts really well, easy to wash off. I like it, I don't love it. So would I buy it again? Probably not. But if you are at Sephora and you can get it easily, would I recommend it? Yeah, yeah. Is she bad? No. Am I gonna buy another one? All right, one that has super surprised me, and this is affordable. Look at this. This is the LA Girl Ultimate Eye uh, Intense Day Auto Liner. So if you like a pencil from the drugstore, this one is great. It is one of those that just twists up. It's not like the smallest point ever. It's kind of, you know, a little chunky. But what I like about this, first of all, glides, no problem. And this, when I use it above my eyelashes, stays all day. But I have been using this actually in my upper waterline. I have been looking for a pencil that is going to work. And I saw a drugstore maven talking about this. And I was like, okay, I'll get it. It's less than $5. And when I put it like right up in here, it totally blanks out. This is the shade, I think, dark brown deepest brown and this is what I'm using I never go for like a black eyeliner unless it's something like this I'm always with the brown eyeliner so I'm not surprised I picked up the brown but this has been fantastic for my upper waterline now this is not where I'm going to tell you that I get no transfer because I'll put it in and then I'll blink and I'll notice I get a, a the smallest little like a shadow of color in my lower waterline and I don't really want that to happen because when that happens it makes my eyes look smaller. So once it's been like five or ten minutes and I'm finishing up with my lipstick or whatever, I will grab a clean q-tip and rub like my lower waterline, get it all out and then it stays for the rest of the day and doesn't transfer. This one's great! At the drugstore! Less than five dollars! Like totally obsessed. Obsessed. Another thing I have been obsessed with that I've been like, wait, what is this? Okay, so this is the one and done brow product from Uma Beauty by Sharon C. I got this at Walmart. It was $4.98, $4.94, I don't remember. It was under $5. Now after tax, of course, a little bit more, but it's a double-ended brow product. I have the shade 04, and it comes with this little teeny tiny pencil. So this pencil is not too soft, it's not too dry. My complaint with the one from Rare was that it was too soft. And I was getting like chunks of pencil stuck in my eyebrows as I was putting it on. No, this one's great where I can actually fill in gaps. I find that the shade between the pencil and the brow product are not exactly the same. So here is the pencil. It's a little bit on the warm side for me, but I feel like once, and I love how tiny this is. Oh, it's amazing. So once I start going through with this, I feel like the difference, if you look at it, do you see how this is much ashier and kind of more gray toned and this is warmer? The reason this works for me is I'll fill in some of those gaps with the pencil and then I'll go over with this. Oh my goodness, this is so great, so great. Love this. Now, I do have other like holy grail eyebrow products, but if you don't wanna spend a lot and you wanna have two products in one, do this. You would probably be well suited to have like a spoolie to you know brush the pencil through your brows before you go in with the brow product. But I get hold from this, I get tint from this. Um, I, I feel like this is a really great product 
oh my goodness, so much precision and the exact sort of things like a small fine detail spoolie for the brow product and then a little teeny tiny pencil to be able to fill in those gaps. This is great. And I have on certain days used just this and that only in my brows and it works great too. There are fibers in it, love, love. This is really good and so affordable. All right, just down to lip products. Um, I have been obsessed with these. These are the serum lip balms from Make Beauty. So the Serum Balm Intense is the one that I have that has a little bit more color in it. <gasps> oh my goodness. Feels so good on the lips. They're glossy, they're juicy, they're hydrating. Um, they repair your lips. I love that. I had a sample, um, they included a sample of one, I think this one's called uh, Nude Nova. And this is like the original balm that they came out with. So as you can see, there's a little bit of color, but it looks mostly clear. So these serum balms, not the intense ones, but the regular serum balms will be like a sheer light pink or a sheer light nude or, and they have different names, but um, this is the Nude Nova and it doesn't really look that nude compared to this. Um, this one, by the way, is the shade Anti-Gravity, but like I'll put one of these in my pocket and I am forever just like reapplying, 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 reapplying. Ah, oh, I love. I feel like I am myself more likely to repurchase the intense version. And somebody mentioned that they got one of the deeper shades, like the red or the berry toned one. And because they're my age, they're in their late 40s, this formula is very glossy. It can sometimes travel. Now with a lighter nude shade like this, I usually wear it on my lips like this it's not a problem because if it's slightly outside, you can't really tell. But if it was a brighter color, I might have problems and you might see like little lines of red or little lines of burgundy. So I'll probably continue buying either the shade Anti-Gravity or something else that is kind of lighter and more nude in tone. But this formula is so good. It actually keeps my lips from getting dry. And there are products that do that. There's a lot of other ones that once you put it on, if your lips are in a good state, it kind of maintains that state of it's not drying out. Uh, the worst products in my mind are the ones that your lips are in a good state, you put them on and by the end of the day, your lips are like, Wah! you know, flaky, craggly, uncomfortable, dry. No, that's not what I want. And so there are those that will maintain that state of your lips all day long. And then there are ones that when the day is over and you're washing your face, your lips feel like a little pillow. That's what these do. All right, obsessed. One lipstick that I was like, eh, first time I picked it up, but the more I've used it, so obsessed with it and it's red and it is the posh lipstick from Victoria Beckham. I feel like one of the reasons I love it is the slimline packaging. Now the packaging itself is to die for, you know, this beautiful tortoise shell. But beyond that, I love that you get a really comfortable cream lipstick that comes in slimline packaging because sometimes I find that if products are too creamy, but you see there's a subtle shine to this, it is such a great, if, and if they're too creamy and they're in a regular, you know, there's movement, this bullet can snap off. And here, because it is in slimline packaging, that's not gonna happen. This is so smart. Now, it's not too creamy, it's not too emollient, it's just right. And this is one that I like to pair with the lip liner because it does, it does have a little bit of shine to it. And about two to three hours in, I find that it does start to slightly trail out on my lips, but I'm almost 50, okay? That's gonna happen. And all I need is a lip liner to kind of like fix that line, put this in, and we're good to go. This is comfortable for all day wear, and this is one of those that I would feel like on the scale of like leaving your lips like pillows at the end of the day or drying them out, this one just kind of maintains. So if my lips are in a good state at the beginning of the day, I can put this on, and by the end of the day when I wash my face, my lips are still in like their initial start of the day good condition. I don't know that this necessarily adds any more moisture, but it does feel comfortable on the lips. When you put it on, it has a really nice um, glide and slide to it, but it's not like slippy. Um, it doesn't end up feeling, um, there are some other formulas that feel a little bit drier, but are still, still kind of um, comfortable on the lips. There are some that tend to be a little thicker. This really doesn't feel like you've got a heavy layer of anything on, and I can just keep like going, going, going. I really like this. I would be curious to try one of the nude shades. This one though in the shade Posh is so good. No, no, Pop. The shade is Pop. This is the red. Love this. This has been like, probably out of all the reds that I've gotten recently, one of my most used. 
this has been amazing. Thank you so much for watching today. I always think it's really important to check back. I love playing in new makeup and I always am super excited and I feel like sometimes that excitement kind of can gloss over some of the initial bumps in the road. Um, and I feel like after I've had a chance to really try stuff and tell you which ones I'm perpetually reaching for, which ones like I'm obsessed with, um, which ones have been perfect for those days when I gotta go and I need to like trust stuff all day, or things that are just bringing me like straight up joy, things that surprise me at the drugstore. I love things like that. And then I don't even say that anything here is like bad. I did a video recently and that I'll link for you down below where it was like the worst products I've tried recently. And some products from these brands ended up in that video. And I really feel like it's rare because I'm so careful in doing research. What's gonna work for me? What I really want to, you know, I look into the brand, I look into the type of product it is, I do a lot of reading, I watch a lot of reviews, unless it's something that's brand new, brand new. And I really feel like I'm pretty careful so I'm not getting a ton of duds anymore. But I do feel like unpacking it and telling you who it's good for, how I like to use it, um, is it something that's rising to the top that I can't stop reaching for, or is it just kind of there? Those sorts of things are helpful so that when you're thinking about making a purchase, you're purchasing things that are going to be useful in your collection. I really appreciate you making the time to watch today. I hope you have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.